Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the Monster Hunter Collab Part 2 banner. I'm very excited about this banner. Uh, I plan, just to give you guys a short little roadmap, I plan on doing probably two more videos uh, between, I don't know, the next 48 hours probably. And that is to, one, go over my pulls, because I will be pulling on this banner. And two, to kind of address the state of the game and talk about the collab it's the actual event part of it and the new event and all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that. But right now we are going to go and look at the new costumes, the new weapons. And I'm really excited. We'll start with Tifa. Um, man, I really like this costume. I think it looks great. I think this is one of the best looking Tifa costumes so far that we've seen. Not crazy about the horn, but hey, not everything's perfect. It'll be okay. So. Here in suit, that's what it's called. What does it do? Magic ability potency plus 10 and 11 blade Arcanum. This makes this the third 11 blade Arcanum that we've received. So we have one for Cloud, one for Zack, and now one for Tifa. What makes Tifa so special though, is pairing it with the Kirin gloves. To my knowledge, this is the first single target magic lightning damage weapon that we've received. That's a big deal because if you need magic lightning damage for a boss, it needs to be single target. And there's so many lightning weapons in this game that boost magic attack and lightning potency, but have AOE lightning damage. And obviously the problem is that AOE lightning damage isn't gonna be as high of a percentage. So for bosses, that's just not as good. Okay, coming over here for the support material, we can see it's got X sigil boost, magic attack boost, magic attack boost. All looks good love it now let's take a look at what we've got here so starting off we're looking at 520 percent and that's gonna be the main thing we focus on the R abilities they're okay I can tell you the lightning potency is not super impressive on this weapon um, this magic attack buff starts at low goes to mid never stacks higher than mid so that is where it caps that's a bonus to me as well that's just kind of the power creep. But ultimately, we're going to be using her instead of somebody like Cloud or Zack when the magic is required versus the physical, right? So when we look at it from that point of view, I think we're probably going to want to get this weapon, I would say, Obi-Wan. That's like, if you're free to play, especially if you're limited on resources, Obi-Wan is really good. Now, I'm going to show you something really quickly. And this was put together by my boy, Tom Rom. He is freaking amazing over in the Discord. And I can tell you this, he's got this for every, all the weapons from five star, OB1, OB6, OB10, what they look like at level 90, because it does make a little bit of a difference. For one, we can't see what OB1 looks like in the game. And so this information right here, this 620% magic lightning damage, that's something you either have to guess on or come to my Discord and take a look. Also, the R abilities. Obviously, level 90 versus 120 is gonna make these look a little bit different. And he's posted all of that on the Discord. So, if you're not part of the Discord, come join us. Link's in my YouTube channel, so you can come. And all this information is posted, along with some other information uh, that I'm gonna drop a little bit later on in this video. So, make sure that you're taking advantage of that because uh, there's lots of people who are doing lots of awesome work and uh, really can make your gaming life a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. So knowing that that goes up to about 620%, we can say, okay, at OB1 at 620, how does that compare to something we already have, like Mirasame, for example? Uh, if we come into Cloud and we look at Mirasame, OB6, it does oh, 620 physical lightning damage. So at OB1, Tifa's new weapon is going to equal Mirasame at OB6. So at OB1, this is just better version of Mirasame. Why? Because it also has a self buff for the magic attack. So for those of you just wanting to be able to keep up, you know, and do, you know, what's needed for the meta, I think this is a must pull. I really do. That's how important I think this is. Now for me personally, I would really like to get this to OB6 because then this goes to mid potency right out the gate and 780% lightning damage, which, you know, is another 160% above where it is at OB1. Now, 
is it worth it to go for OB6? Should you go for OB6? How do you make that call? Well, just a moment ago, I said that there was some other stuff that's shared in my Discord. And this comes from my friend J743. He's got his own YouTube channel where he puts out videos. I have shouted him out once in the past. His guides are amazing. But this is something really unique to Jace and his channel. Jace wrote a program so that he could simulate pulls on banners. And then he simulated those pulls, right? You can see here in this graphic that he's got 200,000 simulated sessions. And this is showing OB1. He's got ones for OB6 and OB10 as well. And you can see here, he's got the target weapon type, a featured weapon, and how many weapons are there? Two, right? And then he's got this graph and he shows us over these 200,000 pulls, this is what your probability is of being able to get a weapon to OB1 based on how many crystals you have. So for example, if you only had 21,000 crystals, that means, okay, you can pull seven times on this banner, you have about a 56% chance of being able to get the weapon you want to OB1. Whereas if you have 33,000 crystals, it's nearly 100, right? Okay, so that's where you can tell, hey, here we go, can I OB1 this? Going to OB6 though, for a free to play, it's invaluable to be able to know what the chances are of getting to OB6 based on the amount of crystals you're either A, holding or B, willing to pull. Because if you're not willing to spend, what that means is that you are going to be stuck wherever you get until you get enough specific weapon parts for that character to raise that weapon. And I can tell you right now, if you can't get it to at least OB4, you can almost say that's probably never happening. Not by the time that weapon is completely power crept. And you really want to be able to get to probably OB5 unless you already have over 200 parts saved. So if you get to OB3, for example, and you have to quit, um, that's not good, right? You probably should have just stopped at OB1 and saved your resources for the next big thing. Why is this good? Because I don't know. I would look at it like if this were an OB6 craft, which like I said, does exist in the video. Go check out his channel. I'll try to remember to put a link. Uh, you can also come to the Discord in the content creator section. He's got the video where he explains how he did all of this and he's got those graphs in there for you. But for example, if I was looking at this, and I, this site like, would say this is an OB6 graph. Um, if I could only get 56% chance, that's not enough, right? I think I need to be closer to 70% minimum in order for that to be a thing. And you can see here how it kind of jumps pretty drastically just based on more pulls. So I would also go check that out, take a look at some of those and use that to help me determine it. Like I said, if you're free to play, you're not buying any more crystals your chances are your chances and that's that, I would take a look at that before I made a decision on whether or not to go for an OP6. With that being said, this is a limited weapon. So yes, if you're gonna go for OP6, that's good. It keeps the weapon uh, relevant for a longer time instead of getting power crept more easily in the future. But it is limited, so maybe that makes you not wanna go for it knowing that you can't wishlist it uh, in the future and you can't easily get it up later on. That's kind of your call. Personally, I would like to go for OB6, but I also am willing to spend if I get really close. Um, I might blow all 70,000 of my crystals on this banner. We'll have to see, but I think that's something that's likely coming. However, ultimately, awesome, awesome. I would want both of these for Tifa. I think Tifa has proven to be a very, very, um, I guess mainline character. The game is supporting her very hard. I don't think you can go wrong uh, building up the Tifa. Coming over to Aerith now. We have the Kimura dress and I have nothing bad to say about this. I think it looks great. It's not like, you know, the my very favorite thing I've ever seen on her. It's not super flashy or anything like that, but it looks really cool. And that's about what I think about it. Uh, as far as what it does, boost heal plus 10. That's good, I'll take it every day. I, I think that's great on this type of support gear. It's not amazing, but it's fine. Buff debuff extension plus 10, AKA plus 60%. Yeah, I'm here for that. I really, really like that. Okay, coming over to Kimura Wand. This is also, I think, an amazing weapon if 
you've built Aerith in the past, like a lot of us that started the game as a support healer. There's several things about this weapon that I think make it a must pull for at least one copy, maybe OB-1, but I think five star is still pretty good. And I want to kind of explain that to you. Now, again, I know the stats I'm looking at are going to be, you know, 120. Tom Rom in our Discord, though, has linked all of these, what it would look like at level 90. That might help you guys. Okay, come check that out. So, what we're looking at here, uh, Spiritual Harmony. Why is this weapon so good, in my opinion? Okay, well, first off, for 4 ATB, it does two party-wide buffs. Now, obviously, there's the HP threshold, so we'll keep that in mind. But physical attack increase, even at 5-star, potency mid, max potency high. Tons of value there. Magic defense increase, potency mid, max potency high. Huge, huge benefit. If for nothing else, if you're being debuffed to either one of these, then it doesn't matter what the duration is, right? And when you're going up two ticks or two arrows, however you want to look at it, uh, that is really valuable on two different things simultaneously. That's four arrows total for four ATB. Really love it. Now, if you were just wanting the actual buff, you want your party to do more damage, take less, whatever it is. Um, okay, now we're, we're getting into a little bit of a pickle, but I think at OB1, it goes up to 16. I do believe, or it should be very close, somewhere in there. Okay, so somewhere between 12 and 16 seconds. However, it's got built-in buff debuff extension, and you don't need to get it to OB6, right? Um, based on Tom Rom's data, it looks like at a five star, you're looking at probably nine points and at OB one, you're looking at 12 again, assuming you only take it to like level 90 and not level 120. but either one of those is going to give it 40% as a main hand weapon. And then at OB one, when it's already 12, very simple to get it to plus 80, right? And if you add 40 to 80% to these, well, now you're getting up to like 23 to 26 seconds here. In fact, at uh, at 16 seconds, if you add 80% to that, and I think that's what it is at OB1 even, well, you're looking at like 29 seconds of uptime. That's a lot of uptime, especially for the value here. Uh, this boost HP, obviously also nice, especially as a main hand weapon on your healer. Like this is super valuable. Now, Coming over to the support material, it's like it gets even better. It's set her up for the all cures, which is great because you want somebody casting this to probably be able to heal your team. It also has a support materia slot for single target heal ability potency plus 20%. This is awesome. And to my knowledge, this is the first weapon that's done this where they've put both of these heal boosts in one weapon. We've seen more and more fights, most recently Leviathan, where you need to be able to do single target heals and AoEs. This makes it to where you don't have to bring Fairy Tail as your secondary weapon. You could bring something else. That could be really important, right? Giving her that versatility, that is what she really needs. It's what's going to help her get back up to par with Matt and why, you know, People have been using Matt more than Aerith lately. Uh, I think this weapon goes a long way in changing that uh, narrative. So this to me is also a must get if you use Aerith in any meaningful way other than just straight up damage. I think this is, this is a must pull and I think you'd be just fine getting a five star copy. It'd be great to get Obi one Would I pull extra just if I, if I already had the Tifa weapon or whatever else I wanted from the banner and I had this at five star, would I pull any more to get Obi-Wan? Probably not. Probably not. And as far as Obi-6, I mean, yeah, sure. 40, 40 points of HP in 27, uh, starting off with that, which is 120%. Yeah, it's amazing, but you don't need this. Okay. This is for like dolphins and whales, basically. And so I wouldn't worry about getting that there. However, I would like the costume. Uh, I think it's I think it's great. I think buff debuff in a costume has so much value. It really does because it really allows you more freedom with your sub weapons. And so ultimately, 
uh, looking at these stamp cards, like, I don't know how many crystals everybody has, but to me, getting through two pages seems like something I absolutely want to do. And that's one of the reasons that I waited and didn't pull on this banner. Although I think this banner is really good as well. Uh, this one, this one is where it's at for me. So that's what I got. I'll go over my wish list when I do the pull video for those of you who want to know. Uh, but that's everything I have. I would love to know what your thoughts are on this banner. If you pull, obviously, I want to know how they go. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.